Welcome to South Pseudo Paranormal. It is Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. And tonight we'll be talking about video games and the paranormal. Something a little bit different this time. As always, you can find all of the episodes of the podcast, along with links to social media, ways to donate, and ways to contact me at the podcast page, which is southcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O, paranormal, at podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you, all, from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions, or if you have stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or others you trust. Happy to either share those uh, by reading them or having you join me on the show. And uh, you can um, talk more through email or Discord and uh, arrange a time. So, um, as I said, tonight we're covering something a little bit different. And uh, this came up just in conversation a little while back. And I thought it was a, a good idea. Um, just because video games are such a major, major part of everything um, in today's world anyway. So, um, thank you all for being here. Uh, as always, and for listening, uh, whether you're here for the live stream or you catch the podcast or YouTube feeds. So I think with that, we can begin. And with that, I want to uh, say hello to Derek. Hey, James. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. No problem. Glad to, glad to talk with you again and cover this. It's a little bit different, like I said, in that it's it's kind of comic book related, but not directly. So. Yeah. Is it, is it kind of come up uh, synchronistically? Like we were talking about it in the chat, in the uh, voice chat, and then uh, we were planning on covering Volume One of Miss Marvel because of the um, MCU show that just came out. But my app wasn't working right, so we called an audible. And you're like, "What about if we do the Ultimate Alliance?" We were just talking about, and I was like, "Yeah, it's a great idea, great idea." So, uh, and there's a lot of cool, esoteric, weird, paranormal, adjacent, sci-fi type stuff in this. So it's a it definitely applies to what we usually talk about. So. Very excited to talk about it, James. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was uh, these two games here. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll get to both of them. We'll see how it goes. But definitely um, both of these games I played a lot back when I played video games a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. starting with um, Ultimate Al Marvel Ultimate Alliance, uh, yeah. which is the more well-known of, of the two games. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure about that. Um, but they're both similar in gameplay. So yeah. that's what's kind of neat about them. Um, upon uh, upon f further investigation, actually, uh, X Men Legends came out first, so uh, Ultimate Alliance was actually like picking back on, uh, on the success of X Men Legends, apparently, in the ah, gameplay okay. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, that makes sense because the system that that was used in X Men Legends two and then um, the first the first Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I don't know why they changed it so much for the second. But, yeah. Um, that kind of gameplay, I think, overall worked really well. And oh yeah, so, it was great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what we decided to talk about today. So. It was uh, my my experience with it. It came out in like '06, Ultimate Alliance, and uh, I didn't get it till probably '09. And uh, me and my roommate and a couple of our friends in college went to uh, like GameStop or whatever, and we were like look, 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 kind of like just browsing for a game we could all play together. And uh, we saw Ultimate Alliance, and this is like the year after Iron Man came out. Like the MCU was still very fresh, and like uh so my roommates weren't really that familiar with the mcu like characters at all because there have been no movies and they didn't follow the comics at all or watch the shows so i'm like a kid in the candy store they also enjoyed it because like the gameplay having four people play at once was like really really fun to be able to like change the characters up and all that kind of stuff so we'll get into it but uh it, it really brought back some, some fun memories when i was uh, going through it yeah so um We'll just, uh, I guess I'll start here and we'll kind of trade off as we go. And Yeah. And, um, but the game, it starts with um, Dr. Doom, who is an uh, enemy of mainly the Fantastic Four, um, later of the Avengers here and there, uh, and this group called the Masters of Evil. That's a name that's been used for a few different groups over the years. Um, but they, they uh, launch this uh, attack on the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier. Um, where Fury is at, Nick Fury is at. Again, director of S.H.I.E.L.D., super spy. Um, so 
This is a yeah. uh, this is this is pre Sam Jackson. Uh, um, yes, but Nick Fury too. So and he is a jerk in this. He is like he is a huge jerk in this. I was I was watching the uh, there's like videos online if people are, are interested and want to check out like they have all the cutscenes kind of all all crammed together with no gameplay and it's like around forty minutes long and it's every scene he's in he is just such a hard ass. It's it's pretty funny. Well, but he does ahead, have Spider Man and Wolverine to deal with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. There you got the 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 comedian and then you've got the guy that's even. Just as tough as you are. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and so this is a huge attack. It's not just what, um, a few few people that are attacking this helicarrier. And this is a mobile sky base, basically. Yeah. And um, so Fury sends out a distress call to all available superheroes uh, to come and save the carrier. And the game has, again, has a lot of different characters you can choose from, but it follows four in particular um, in the actual cutscenes, which are Captain America, Spider-Man, Thor, and Wolverine. Yeah. And um, in a way, it's kind of like a mixing of the, the newer and then the, or the older and the newer Avengers, because you have Captain America and Thor. Yep. And then you have Spider-Man and Wolverine, which join later. Yeah. Um, and so they, they show up, and that's how the game starts with them, uh, working their way through the helicarrier. And it's a, it's a fighting game. It's a it's a I guess you call it like a beat 'em up or something like that. Yeah. And um. So they basically they fend off this this attack, but it still damages the the helicarrier to the point where it can't be used anymore as a base. And so um, Tony Stark, Iron Man, uh, lets them all go to his tower, uh, Stark Tower. And use that as a new base. Yeah. And that, that, um, sorry. That, that's that's like kind of his like only role really in the game. Like when you're talking about the main four that we follow around, you would think that uh, Iron Man would be included in that. But in this game, he kind of he's much lamer than he is in the movies and in the comics, and he is kind of just uh, acting as like the the tech guy basically. And he's much more of a boring. He's not he's not as charismatic as he is in all other mediums. Yeah, yeah. He's mainly just there for the story, I think, in this one. Um, yeah. serve a purpose for the story. So, um, and the the reason it turns out that the helicarrier was attacked, I believe, is for these plans um, that will be discussed later on. Um, and uh, yeah. that was the main reason for the helicarrier being attacked, to get access to these certain plans. And um, so... And no one knows about this really until the near the very end. Yeah. So do you want to uh, do you want to just switch off paragraph to paragraph, or do you want to just keep going through the whole thing, and I'll just chime in when I want to, or how do you want to? Uh... You know what? If you want to, take, yeah, if you want to take it for a little bit here, yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, uh, we 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 kind of cut back to Fury, and he um, he's he's like we're at at, at Stark Tower, all kind of in like his like living room and stuff, and he's going over how um. There's a message from Dum Dum Dugan. So when I'm I'm watching the, these clips, and we remember that this is a world where the Marvel Universe is not the center of popular culture. So and they toss a lot of like uh, very comic-y um, elements in here that I'm like thinking like, I remember like my friends being like, oh this is weird. It's like Dum Dum Dugan, that's a weird name. Like which is uh, pretty funny at the time. But he says that uh, he was on the Omega base, uh, the the uh, Omega base, which is like a mobile shield facility. And uh, Spider Man's like, um, what you guys have like a flying heli, like flying base helicarrier. You have this giant roaming base on wheels. Like, what's next? You have a uh, a, a tunnel underground that goes from uh, New York to Japan, and uh, basically they're being attacked by like uh, Modok, Crimson, Crimson Dynamo, Mysterio, and some eight um, AIM agents, and uh, the base crashes into a dam. Um, and launches several gamma bombs. Um, uh, right? Um, oh no, they so they fail to to crash into the dam. Yeah. Launch several gamma bombs. Sorry, yeah. sorry. That's a big uh, big difference. Um, so then at this point they travel to Atlantis um, because uh, like Namorita and like the um, there was like a distress call from Namorita, right? So yeah. I guess the the civilians of Atlantis are 
trying to usurp Namor. And um, it says, with the help of uh, nanotechnology that enables him them to breathe and move freely underwater, the heroes fight the mind-controlled um, Atl uh, Atlanteans. Um, or they're being mind-controlled by Atuma. I don't, uh, that wasn't really in the, uh, in the cutscenes. Do you know what that's about? Uh, my, what, the, what Atuma is? That's, Does um, that ring any bells? It's a, a character mainly more associated with, with Namor comics, I believe, from way back when. Um, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of these characters, that they're, they're, they bring a lot of characters in here that are minor and or from way yeah, back. They, yeah, um, they go deep. Yeah. Dugan, especially, that, that's a character that comes from the 60s, right, along with Fury and, and a lot of them. But yeah, um, basically what, what it is is these, um, there are different characters in Atlantis that obviously don't like Namor and yeah. um, try to take, want to take over. And so they, and I'll take it from here for a little bit, they, um, okay. they, get, they make this trade with what appears to be the Mandarin, who is another villain, yeah. um, more associated with Iron Man, actually. And um, and what they get for this trade is these mind control devices, and um, which they use to take over Atlantis. <laughs> and yeah. and so what man this Mandarin gets uh, is access to um, basically ancient ruins in Atlantis. And um, so, but the thing is. That's not actually Mandarin. <laughs> it's actually Loki, who becomes a major oh, yeah. part of this game. Um, in terms of the, <laughs> yeah. the, is basically working with Doom. He and Doom are really in, in charge of the whole thing. Yeah. And um, but the heroes don't know about this, so they go to um, the Valley of the Spirits, which is Mandarin's base. And of course, Mandarin has no idea what's going on. Because he wasn't in Atlantis. And so he, um, but after the heroes take him down, he, he basically tells them that, uh, or they want to know if he knows anything about the Masters of Evil. And yeah. he says no, because he tried to take command of them and uh, then failed. And so he left the group. And um, he, he suggests again that what they saw in Atlantis was actually Loki. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So um, now this is and, uh, we, uh, oops, sorry. at one point two. At one point two, uh, the Loki uh, Mandarin or um, the Kraken is released. Basically, yes. so they, yeah. they they battle a Kraken at some point, which uh, is very cool. Yep, that's but, near the end of that yeah. section. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so yeah, after the team returns to base, they learn that Nightcrawler and Jean Grey, which are two of the X Men have been kidnapped and um if there's no one knows how exactly it happened so fury suspects it's done it's been done through magic especially with loki being involved i think at this point it's safe to say that's a possibility yeah. um and so fury has the whole operation moved to dr strange dr strange's home the uh, sanctum sanctorum um and a, Professor X, Xavier, meets meets them there. And he uses his abilities in Cerebro to track down uh, Nightcrawler. But um, when they try to, the team tries to go there, they're sent to Murder World, <laughs> which is this yeah. killer amusement park, literally. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that, that fits in with your... Uh series on crazy amusement parks and carnivals and circuses and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Another example of that in pop culture. Yep. Um, you know, uh, is this the point where I, I know like at one point Spider-Man makes like a quip or something kind of joking like why are we, why do we have to go rescue blah 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 and then Wolverine's like because Nightcrawler's in trouble pretty much and like shut them up immediately like they were kind of like going back and forth through the whole story yeah. but then as soon as like Nightcrawler's in danger Wolverine's like Shut up, kid. Basically, like we're going to do this. Like an X Men is needs needs my help, pretty much, which was like a real bad at, badass uh, Wolverine moment. Yep. Yeah. Um, definitely. And then at one point, they they're they're like, "How did he? How did Nightcrawler even teleport them to this other dimension? Like he's not he hasn't been he's not able to do that." And then this so 
uh, I forget how it happens, but they they find that the, like somebody was able to amplify his powers like with some technology or something, right? Yes, that remember? was yeah. a device that was stolen from the Omega base. Okay. Okay. And it's it does amplify abilities, but it also um, is basically kills slowly kills anyone that uses it. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah, so they um. So they get end up getting caught in, in and this um when they're they're diverted, it's basically because of a Doctor Strange enemy, Baron Mordo. Yeah. And who is also working with the Masters of Evil. Yeah. So the heroes are able to um rescue Jean Grey. And um and so they uh basically take down an arcade. And yep. learn a bunch of the stuff about the, the, the device and Nightcrawler and everything from Arcade, actually. Oh, okay. So, um, and they find out that Doom, Dr. Doom used his, used that device to, um, to make Nightcrawler open a portal to Mephisto's realm. Which is basically almost like Marvel's version, or a, a version of L for Marvel. Yes, yeah, exactly. This really this game really bounces around from uh, like you start out on a helicarrier fighting robots, and then you're in this circus world, and then you're going down to this hell realm, and it really touches all the different uh, like you're in, you're cosmic at one point, and it just very uh, it touches all the cool elements of Marvel. It really gives you for a true Marvel fan. This is like I highly recommend playing this game. You get like it's like 140 characters. It's like it goes deep with the with the lore. So very cool. But go on, sorry. Yeah, no problem. But yeah, um, so, and and Jean Grey goes with the heroes to to Mephisto's realm to try to help find Nightcrawler. But of yep. course, she gets captured once they get there. <laughs> yeah. And now this is something I didn't know until I was just looking at this that Blackheart is Mephisto's son. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't know yeah. if they if that's something the, the writer of this uh, summary that we're looking at here just kind of assumed or what. Uh, yeah. I may have to look into that. See, I thought Blackheart was made out of collective energies, negative energies, in uh, a location that eventually formed into Blackheart. Is oh, what wow. I thought his origin story was, but I could be wrong. I'm not really. I'm not too familiar with Blackheart, to be honest. He was. Um, he was used in an earlier game, that Marvel superheroes game that I used to play a lot um, on the PlayStation, the original PlayStation. Oh, yeah. Um, he was at, as one of the, the characters there. Yeah. But, um, so basically the, the team finds Blackheart and discovers that he has Nightcrawler and Jean Grey each in a cage above this, uh, infinity vortex, which will basically destroy anything that goes into it. It says here, uh, that Mephisto uh, created a quote unquote son from the energy of accumulated evil. Oh, so okay. he calls he, he calls him a son, but he is like what you said. Okay. Very yeah, good. Makes sense. It does. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> I'll finish this next paragraph and then you can go from there for a little okay. bit. So okay. um and basically there's only one key for one cage. And of course Blackheart has it, so you have to fight Blackheart. Um yeah. and you have to pick one of those two characters. To save, and um, yeah. it doesn't matter for the game as far as gameplay, but um, yeah. we'll get to why it matters in the end, I think. Um, yeah. And so, basically, whatever one you you uh, ends up dropping comes back as a um, basically a shadow of their former self, and joins in the fight against um, Bla uh, Mephisto. And then um, basically sacrifices himself to defeat Mephisto and allow the heroes to escape. Yep. Um, and then <laughs> at one point, then, so all of a sudden we see Logi kind of cut. Like, uh, I, I never got to this point in the game. I don't think, I think we played for like a, f a few weeks and then I never really, uh, like, once we stopped playing, I never really dove, got farther than that point. So this is all new, just watching the watching the cutscenes and stuff. So, um, 
part of these details you get from playing the game, so I, I missed it. But in the cutscenes, all of a sudden you see Loki on this like cliff in uh, Asgard, seeming, seemingly, and this like huge he unleashes this like massive army of uh, apparently these like super soldiers, huge army of super soldiers, and they're attacking all the Asgard like the uh, Asgardian gods. And then it cuts back to to Thor being like, we have to go help uh, help Asgard. Asgard is like being overtaken by by Loki and this this, this massive army. Um, but the Bifrost isn't working at this point, apparently. Um, so they have to like open, like the Bifrost on like our end or whatever, on Earth's end or something isn't opening. So they have to figure out a way to do that. But when they open it, Thor's like, the Wrecking Crew is going to be there waiting for you like, when you open it. And Spider-Man is like, the Wrecking Crew. Well, how bad can the Wrecking Crew be? That's a, that's a very lame name. And then Thor says, they, 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 whenever I fight them, they give me a lot of trouble. And they, they, almost, they almost kill me a few times. And that kind of freaks Cap out. He's like, if they almost kill Thor, then we should kind of be worried about this. So they fight the Wrecking Crew and uh, these like undead soldiers unleashed by Hela, um, trying to like open this Bifrost bridge up again. Um, and then they're searching for Odin in uh, Niflheim, following a fight with uh, Curse and Ulik. Um, so they find his shattered Twilight sword and learn from Ymir that Doctor Doom and Loki have taken Odin to Raven Sapphire. So like none of this is in the cutscenes, so I really don't remember this much of this. But um, and after Loki seemingly defeated Raven Spire, the team frees the Destroyer armor um, to use against Doctor Doom. Because like Doom has at this point, does he have the Odin Force at this point in the game? He's at, at some point in the game, he becomes essentially unkillable from like their perspective until they acquire all these these things, right? Yeah. Well, does he already have it uh, at yeah. this point? Yeah, because what happened too is um, Loki actually. Uh, gets the the destroyer armor, and they have to take the the armor out and knock out Loki, actually. Oh, okay. And Valhalla, Valhalla which is where the the dead go in 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 Asgard, and that's when Doom shows up. And yeah, he has the the he has Odin's powers. And um, okay. And then yeah, from there, guess who steps in? So. Um. Yeah, so they uh so where were we? So Loki's disguised as Fury, um, reveals himself uh in the plot to have the heroes free the armor for the various purposes. As heroes defeat Loki in the armor, Doctor Doom appears and reveals that he's stolen Odin's power, yeah. And then yeah, okay, so then he uses it to attempt to eliminate the heroes, but Uatu, the watcher, the big dog, the cosmic the cosmic watcher, the celestial thing, the celestial being who's not supposed to interfere at all, but always interferes. <laughs> um, saves them and, tra and transports them to uh, the Inhumans moon base um, at land. Um, then he, 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 starts, he starts to tell them that the only way to defeat Doom is to uh, acquire this piece of the, Mac the McCann crystal um, from like the the Shi'ar Empire, right? Yep. And then steal the Moanic Inducer from Galactus, which when they show Galactus uh, and it's wild. To show. He's, it's a very cool depiction of Galactus. It's exactly comic depiction. Um, but it just, it's, it's just, he's just absolutely massive. It's so it's, it's very cool. But uh, yeah, so this McCann crystal is this like, super powerful like gem that is, uh, uh, I forget where it's being guarded um, by the Imperial Guard of the Shia Empire. And they explain that uh, like the Shia Empire is like this intergalactic cosmic um, empire that kind of connects a, a whole ton of. Um, different alien civilizations within the Marvel universe together under like one one rule and like they really only have problems when like there's interfights between like the dynasty themselves you know yeah um so they go and they do all that after retrieving the crystal the hero travels to the scroll home world um with the help of the silver surfer um they fight galactus disable galactus and steal that moanic inducer um uh then Meanwhile, Doctor Doom conquers Earth. So, watching it from the cutscene video, you're all of a sudden you're getting this plan. You're getting revealed by the Watu what you have to do to to save the day. But like saving the day happens with all all within the gameplay. So then all of a sudden it cuts right to. Meanwhile, Doctor Doom conquered Earth, and it's just whoa, what what happened? I didn't expect that. Um, so, essentially, he he learns that he has this like ability to corrupt people. So they so they they show him like fighting uh like Hulk or something, and then like corrupt um. 
he's doing this like corrupting thing and then creating clones of all the heroes and using them to like take over the world and fight everybody. Um, so in a final effort, the team travels to Latveria to confront Doom and using the McCann Crystal and the Monarch Inducer to weaken them. Um, the heroes, uh, he's blasted by this like lightning bolt sent by a rejuvenated Odin. Oh yeah, Odin all of a sudden just comes back and just uh, like daddy's home type of deal. Um, and just obliterates Doom, which is leaving just his mask behind. Um, and then the heroes meet up on the uh, helicarrier that's back in action. Um, and Thor, uh, Fury asks uh, Thor to thank Odin for undoing the the uh, damages. Basically, like we get a cutscene saying the world has gone to hell because Doom has taken over and just completely destroyed everything. And then another cutscene being like. Oh yeah, thank your dad, Thor, for just completely switching everything back to the way it was uh, was before, and just kind of yada yada all the damage that had happened. This is all completely fixed. Um, and then Fury tells the team that they have to. Uh, uh, oh, he says that Odin is currently busy punishing Do uh, Doom and Loki, and then Fury tells the team that they have to disband. And uh, he asks, like, if they if they can count on if Shield can count on them to fight if another like crisis like this comes up. And they're all sick of Fury at this point, like the audience is, like the player is kind of, because he's a jerk the whole time. And then and Cap goes like, um, the world can count on us to, to, to fight. Like, I guess the Avengers don't really exist in this universe, in this version of the MCU, or the, or the, or the Marvel Universe. So, um, yeah. So this is basically this Ultimate Alliance is like their version of the, the Avengers. And they're like, if, if it happens again, call us, but not for S.H.I.E.L.D., it's for, for the Earth. But yeah. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, also, the the reason that everything happened was partly because of Fury, because um, his his people came up with this plan on how to steal Odin's powers. <laughs> yeah. And that's what Doom was after, and that's what Doom used. And so, a lot yeah. of this, in in a, in a way, is Fury's fault. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So. Which is classic. That's yeah. not just classic. It's 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 always Shield or Fury or Tony Stark. It's always like we got to fix their 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 meddling. You know, like in order, which is like a pretty conspiratorial like government idea thing to do. It's like they're always like they're meddling with crazy mad science scientists inventions and crazy CERN colliders and opening portals to other realms. And it's like, are you sure you should be doing that just because you can? Like like Jurassic Park style, just because you can. Like, should you do it? You know. Um, could you steal Odin's power just because you can? Like, I don't know. But, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and really the last thing in, this, in <laughs> yeah. this game is just, of course, the heroes took something from Galactus, so he wants revenge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he goes back, it's just such a such a meager race yeah. of people, and he goes, I will get my revenge. Yeah, it's just absolutely massive. Yep. Yeah, yeah and I think, I think a lot of those kind of scenes are done just in case there is, like, a major um, a sequel. And to the game, which there yep. was a sequel, but it didn't get to many platforms. I found out. Um, didn't, oh, yeah. didn't get nearly as popular. I didn't play it. Yeah. yeah. So. And then at the end, at the at the end, they kind of go through, um, depending on your like. So the version I watched, I think, is just depending on this whoever made the video, the, whatever decisions they made during the game. But it tells you what what your decisions, how it influenced the future of the Marvel universe. That like. You did this, so like it's unfortunate that you didn't save Jean Grey because now she's mad and she's gonna come back as Dark Phoenix and vow to destroy everyone who didn't save her. Or it's like it's it's unfortunate that you didn't do you didn't uh, stop blah 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 because it that's gonna set off this um, legacy virus that's gonna wipe out most of the mutants on the planet. And it's like there's a few other versions of that which aren't listed here. I don't think, but uh, that was a cool element at the end of the game. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was all based on um, on the what what you did in the game, and some of that is yeah. it's easy to do all the objectives if you're just playing on the on the easy mode. But when you if you're playing on some of the harder modes, you might not get to everything. So it's uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And some it's, it's some some things like you said like, like you said earlier. Some are like choices. Like you have to you either save this person or you save this person. So. You can't save everybody. So then at the end it says, well, you saved this person, but because you didn't save the other person, that means they're going to come back and destroy everybody or that set off this chain of events that that collapsed the Shi'ar Empire and set off a Kree-Skrull war that 
killed millions over the course of a decade or whatever, you know? And it's like, whoops, sorry. But that, that incentivizes the gameplay of the gamer to like go back and try again with making different choices and then getting different results and that kind of stuff for, for multiple plays, you know? Yeah. Yep. Definitely. And, um, and you can also, I found out when playing the game, you can, um, keep the characters at their power levels, um, that you, you ended the game with in a new game, st get game start. Oh, that's cool. So that, um, that can change things as well. So, but yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, the number of characters, like you said, there's a lot and there's a few of them that actually, um, they're basically villains that are added to the roster because a version of Dr. Doom <laughs> goes back in time to try to stop himself from causing all this damage. <laughs> And oh, wow, so cool. you have Doom, uh, I believe Venom, uh, Sabretooth, is it? I'm not sure. There's like four villains, basically, that, that are available yeah. in the game. I think Sabretooth is one of them. Oh, that's cool. But, uh, but yeah, yep. So, yeah, it was a neat game. It's very fun, yeah. I got to play it as soon as uh, we finish the show. Um, speaking of Sabretooth and the X-Men, do you want to cover X-Men Legends? Do you keep time? Um, I think we're kind of good. If we do that, we might be going over over an hour. Yeah. It feels like that's true. that that's one true. seems like it even has yeah. an even longer um, summary to it. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's true. Yeah, that one I've never actually played, uh, but I watched the video, and that was a cool one. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it is a good one. Um, and uh, but it's it's all X Men characters, and um, that definitely has esoteric and paranormal stuff in it as well. So. Um, yeah, so sure. yeah, I think we'll save that for another time. But uh, yeah, for sure, for sure, the games are fun to uh, mix in there too. So cover uh, TV, movies, comics, and video game now video games. Uh, so yeah, I was, it's, it's nice to mix I it up. I was thinking maybe at some point we'll have to review the uh, X Men and Wolverine animes at some point. Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't watched those yet, so uh, that'd be a good a good excuse to, to to crank those out. Yeah, definitely. Let me know when you watch those, though, and I'll. Uh, I'll try to watch around the same time. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. But yeah, that was that was fun, James. Thanks for having me. I'll uh I'll meet you up. But thanks for everybody for listening and uh see you next time. Thank you. Oh thank you. Yep. This was fun. And uh but yeah, yeah. So it was a it, that that game was a, a good game. And um I enjoyed it a lot when I played it. It just it, again it is just a big tour of the whole all the possible realms of Marvel. So um Anyway, definitely recommend it, and uh, I think that'll do it for today. So thank you all for listening. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow night with uh, True Paranormal Stories from the Web. Yeah, that's the plan. And then we'll go from there. So I uh, have a good night, and we'll talk to you on the next episode of South Cedo Paranormal. Take care.